What's up, Action Line Army? I just wanted to give a shout out to everybody, say thank you for your support here on Patreon. Um, as a reward for the upper levels, I wanted to kind of make this walkthrough video of a, a sketchbook page that I've done. So you can really get in there and see all the details and I can uh, share a little bit about what these sketches are about, what they represent, what I was thinking about when I made them. And also, um, I've received uh, a few requests to talk more about how to make your drawings not look so stiff and flat. So I want to kind of mention that a little bit as I go through this as well. So um, this should be relatively short, you know, five to seven minute video. But um, let's go ahead and jump right in. So as you can see, this is the full uh, sketchbook page. And uh, I want to kind of, like I said, go through and show what what I'm thinking about. So let's start here in the upper left. Move this into center. There we go. So one of the main things I'm focusing on at this stage, this is a very, very early preliminary kind of sketching. Um, I'm trying to develop ideas for my story and my comic as I'm sketching. So character details might change, things like that. <clears throat> but what I'm trying to do here is determine um, <clears throat> what kind of scenarios, what kind of poses, what kind of action that we might see during the course of this comic. Uh, this is a comic about a bunch of supermodels that get stranded on uh, an island and they have to survive, but things get even crazier when they discover that every day is a different point in time. They might wake up and there's dinosaurs one day or conquistadors the next. So I wanted to see like, you know, what that meant, what did it look like? So most of the sketches you see on here are me working out ideas of what kind of scenarios we might find these characters in. And along the way of doing that, some of the characters start to develop as being the strong one or the smart one or things like that. Now, when it comes to the whole idea about having your characters not feel so stiff and flat, one of the things that you'll most often see in uh, people's sketches when they say that their drawings feel flat is that the drawings seem to be of characters, however their style is, and the, the character tends to just stand. And that's, that's all that they do. And then they might have a drawing like so. If you just do that, then yeah, your drawings are going to feel stiff. But that's how we all start off drawing, is straightforward looking right at our character. What you want to start thinking about if you want to get your characters to start to feel more alive is to think about them as individual shapes that can be twisted and turned. In this particular case, you can see my underdrawings here, a white circle right there. I start with a circle for the head to kind of represent the size things are going to be. And then I have a circle for one side of the, the chest and another circle about the same size for the other. And so you can see these are the same size circles approximately. Uh, another set of circles uh, for the hips. You can see these being replicated right here. One, two, three, four. I've discovered that uh, between those two, you'll also find uh, a, another circle that, in between them that represents where these two sections cross, the midpoint, stomach area, things like that. So what you want to do is start to think about and practice things as form. When you think of a circle, start to think of it, uh, like in this case of this circle down here, as a sphere with contour lines on it. And all contour lines are are like a grid uh, that goes across it and it shows you like how the form goes around it. And the more that you understand that, the easier it is to do highlights and shadows and, and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, as you can see up above, um, I have some cylinders kind of represent uh, either this arm or, or this leg. I think it was that leg actually. So here you have the, the basic cylinder. 
uh, if, so just practice doing that to start to do warm ups, you know, kind of make two ellipses and snap them together and then try changing those up or bending them. So I might put one right here and a smaller one right here and then, you know, practice connecting those like so. Okay. So once you get it to that point, you can start creating fancier shaped cylinders, but they're still the same concept. And that's essentially all this is right here, is a cylinder that has been fancified a little bit, okay? Then the next thing to practice doing is learning how to put the contour lines on there. Um, this will give you a clearer understanding of how light is going to bend around these objects. And then lastly is how you apply light. Now I have some shadow on here, so let me turn the light on. There we go. So in this particular case, this is the light source shining in on those uh, pieces. And you can see exactly where the light is because the brightest area of this cylinder is facing it. And then as it gets away, it gets darker. And then I have a little bit of a, a rim light or bounce light there. Okay? So that's the concept that you apply light and shadow to. And where the light and shadow comes from is just dependent on where you set up your light source. So here I'm going to turn on the light. And you can see that there's different light sources on here. But right now the light source for this hip is coming from right over here. And basically when I set my light source up right here and I see the lights coming, I look at this leg as a cylinder and I see that, okay, the light, if it's here, is going to hit, you know, here. I might guess that it's here. I might guess that it's here, but wherever it is, it's going to be pretty close. But once you have that main section done, I can then go around here and kind of just follow this light source to all these different places to put where the light is going to be. And this really starts to create depth uh, in your drawing when you can start to add light and shadow in the proper places. All right, I promised this video would be seven to eight minutes, so I want to go ahead and cut it off right here. I will be doing a tour of the rest of the sketchbook page and what I was thinking about as I was sketching them, uh, mostly just focusing on that in part two of this video series. So thanks for checking it out. Thank you again for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.